I have my drawings of Camachi and the sketches that I did in the museum. And this week I want to look again at developing a process for combining these elements into interesting compositions. And I've got out these pieces that I was doing when we were working with the animal theme. And these were created by cutting out some of the shapes that I'd drawn from my sketches and either using them to make, um, either using the cutout as a stencil, as I've done there where I've printed something, or um, using them as a mask to blank over an area. And I thought I'd, I'd like to use that approach with my figures. And I thought I could combine a certain amount of monoprinting with some collage. So I've cut out some of these figures and you'll have seen with the video that I sent out some images of Bill Jacklin's studio where for his skaters, I think in particular, he's cut out his subjects and is therefore able to set them up and arrange them, you know, in relation to each other. So there's quite exciting things you can do there, I think. So you might be interested in that, it takes a bit of cutting, so you've got to be handy with the scissors. But that will also generate these stencils, these, uh, you know, spaces, um, and the figures themselves, which can be used as masks, or could just be you know, arranged within a composition. So I'm going to do a little bit of monoprinting using those stencil shapes and mask shapes, and then I'm going to combine it with some collage. So the figures will be monoprinted, and the backgrounds, the interiors, will be collaged. So I'm just trying to find some interesting ways to develop my monoprinting technique. So with one of my cutout figures, I'll use that as a mask. And if I put my paper on top to take a print, I will then have a white shape based on the cutout. There it is. Um, that's probably enough, I think. I can press a bit harder, but I held the corner so that if, as I just did, I needed to take another impression, that's how that could be done. So that's one possibility. Something going on there with the positive shape of the figure. It'll do interesting things to the back of my cut out as well. So I might actually be able to use that somewhere. But I'd like to try another version. If I ink up the plate again. So this time instead of the mask, I'm going to use the stencil. So I'll lay that on there and I'd like to do a little bit of that mono printing work. The wipe away subtraction approach within the figure. So maybe I can wipe away something of the light of the face. There's a texture to that scarf. Um, some of the modeling of the figure. And she's holding her coat. So I'm just trying to introduce some textures to different parts of the print, and she had turn-ups, maybe a bit of light on the shoe. So there's more I could do, but you can see there I've, I've disrupted some of the, the ink. And what do I do now? Now I need a bit of paper to take a print. I've pressed hard enough, but I can always check as usual. Oh, 
more like that, yes. So I think I missed a bit along there. I'd probably be quite good to have a tool. I'm just using my finger, but a rag is quite a good idea as well, actually. A clean rag, of course. Just to make sure I get as much of the ink and the print as I can. And then that's the sort of figure I'm getting. With terrific depth, I think. Uh, and then there'll be something left over as well. What happened to the stencil? Nothing very much happened there. But I might just take a print of this. Because doesn't that look interesting? Promising? So really what I'm after here is a whole selection of Figures, reworked figures, um, figures treated with different texture, uh, figures as solid or figures as spaces, things that I can then set out in some way uh, in my collage. Composition. So that's that's not very interesting, actually, I don't think. Um, let's see what I've got so far I've got my real figure I'm very pleased with that one and a similar kind of space so of course we've got the reversal of everything because that's what happens with um, with printing. So that's already added another dimension, uh, another possibility of looking at these figures facing in different ways. So I'm going to make a few more with my other cutout drawing and then move on to some collage. Here's my next one. Um, I did a little bit of scratching and rubbing around the figure. I've used it as a mask. I could have been a bit more specific about how I dealt with that background but there's my figure and there's a gap so next if I work with the stencil of that particular figure I can maybe put it near to no I'm not going to get anything from that I'm going to do it over here of course and do some more wiping away. There it is ready to be printed. I wiped away a bit of light based on what was in my drawing. And then I'll take a print. I think I'll go this way this time. Let's see what I get. Just using uh, with the previous monoprints I was working with newsprint, which is very sensitive. This is a slightly thicker paper. Yeah, I do like these. Uh, I like these stencils, and I wonder if there's anything left on that plate that I could take something from. So there wasn't much ink left on the plate, or there wasn't at the end that I'd been working. It was at the other, but that's that's what it's generated. It's not that exciting. There's something with that figure there that I could possibly work with. The other one is just a bit of an outline. So these are the figures that I've generated from the monoprinting process. And frankly, I think they're much more interesting than the charcoal drawings that I started with. So I would, I'm pleased that I've got something that can contribute to the next stage, which is putting the figures into a setting. So I, of course, have my original drawings, charcoal drawings, which I'd photocopied. So I might even want to put some of these, yeah, I'll have to cut them out, won't I? Put some of these characters in there. Uh, or I'll begin some collage work, um, creating some spaces in which these figures can 
exist. Well, actually, I thought I would just cut out the other one to see how they work in this setting. One thing I've concluded thus far is that actually a preferred... Well, it's quite nice how... Um, well, these two figures facing the same way. And if I did this differently, I would have actually gone for that that view so that they can not face the same way. But there we go, a couple of figures there. And of course, every time I cut out, I generate yet another stencil. So you have no idea how excited I am by the potential in this approach. Now for some collage and to add these figures into a collage setting. So I'm going to make a start on the collage process. I'm going to work with this drawing that I did in the museum. And I've got some, let's put it there, I've got some pieces of paper, uh, a bit of uh, newspaper, which I'm going to make my base. Uh, I found this just now in a catalogue, quite like that green, that green sheet which is going to be my floor and then I'm thinking of having that block there so I'm doing a little bit of tearing cutting uh, of straight edges that was the thing one of the experiences of the museum this this quite kind of clean abstracted interior so I'm starting with a few shapes nothing too colorful but I'm also thinking of having the stairs coming down there needs to be a bit more of an angle than that I've gone too far anyway these are of course approximate shapes which will be glued down and drawn into. So I just have to decide what else is going to go over here. Maybe some more of the yellow. And what I did like about this as a subject was the archway in the distance. So putting down these sheets of paper, um, you've seen this before with the collage, gluing them in place and then drawing on top. And I might, I think I'll glue them down and then I'll place the figures on top just to show you before I then do a little bit of ink drawing and put the figures down again. So that's what I'm thinking of for the basic structure. So everything is getting ripped up here and to work. I just want a bit of a an archway in the distance. Okay, so that might be my setting. Here are my figures. Heads on the same level. I could do with some smaller figures. Just wanted to try that out, but let me try some lines now uh, on top. I'm just refining my collage pieces of paper with a bit of drawing. Um, and I'm putting in a fairly robust ink line. And I'm changing some of these pieces of collage paper using that line because I think that's a good way to work. To refine and modify the collage shapes so that there's something to adjust when you add, if you add pastel or I'm going to put a little bit of wash on as well so that I'm actually adding some tone. 
And then these are going to be my stairs. Because my monoprint figures are all black, black and grey, I think initially it will help with integrating them. The fact that I have got some some black in the drawing and I think if I now do a little bit of wash that might help even more because then the blacks and the greys of the ink and the wash will connect with the blacks and greys in the figures. Let me get some wash. And of course the wash or the tone is a little bit of a challenge because I didn't really make any notes about tone in my line drawing. In fact there was a there's a big sculpture at that point. So I'll put that in and then I think maybe I'll get something on this wall. And probably something here. Some of these steps. So it's pretty rough and ready collage because I just want to create something of a setting out of. Well, I want the I want the structure, the framework in which to stand my figures. So that. That will do me, I think. And then I'm going to put these figures on. Start to see how they work. And then look at a little bit of colour. So that one could be here. And that over there. This one is disappearing. I wonder if I might just use that one. There we go. So I'll glue them down and I'll just add a little bit of colour and light to see how that's going to develop. So this is a little bit rough and ready, but my next task is to work with some colour. I've actually got some chalk pastels this time. I've left my preferred oil pastels at home, but I'm using the pastel just to start to bring together both the collaged areas and the uh, printed areas. So I'm working a bit with the negative shapes just to see how these uh, I can integrate these figures with their settings but I'll also start to put a little bit of pastel on on the um, figures themselves a little bit of light and dark always helps maybe we'll make that even lighter in there Let's make it dark in that archway. A bit of charcoal. And then I could, as I say, do things to these figures. And there. Uh, oh Lord, look at that. <laughs> the incredible exploding pastel just a I don't know why that happened, but I'm just putting a little bit of a warm light. I wanted to get it on a hand there. And perhaps a colour to that coat. Now I've stuck things down, but I could obviously 
have left them unstuck for a while just while I worked out the optimum position and that's where this collage approach can allow you to make discoveries and find permutations which work better and I think also it would be good to start to put down some shadows something I was encouraging you to do when you were drawing from life and trying to uh, integrate figures into the same space now where is our light going to be? That's what I've got to decide. I think I'll just have it going from the right. And they can each have their own shadow like that, which starts to place them. So there's more and more I need to do. I need to sort of decide a bit more about these walls and get a distinction between the wall and the space behind it. So all those refinements and as I refine around these figures, you know, they start to both inhabit the space, but also stand out from it a bit. And I'm hatching across the um, monoprint because I want these amazing textures that you get from monoprinting. I want those textures to still shine through or to show through. And, you know, by hatching the pastel on in the way that I am, I'm leaving gaps and that can work. So that's just a little bit of an introduction, but trying to take the process to the point of actually putting these figures into their setting and working out how to integrate them uh, and looking at both refining the figures but also refining the setting. And if I've managed to demonstrate something that's reasonably kind of flexible and can, as a process, generate certain ideas, then it can mean that the painting process or the... the, 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 the um, working on a, a painted composition can actually be if not solved then certainly some of the challenges uh, and the narrowing down the possibilities can be done through this um, series of stages generating something new and I just love with the collage that you get all sorts of ideas about colours which um, may not be what you might have first thought of, but that you can respond to what's there in your collage material and begin to develop new colour combinations, patterns and so on, which have come from that, that process. Okay, so I look forward to see what, seeing what comes from your experiments and we'll be in the studio on Monday and I'll have all these materials and it may be that some people will also want to uh, 